everyone. It's, um, uh, been a while, hasn't it? I'm sorry that it's taken me so long to come out with this second part of my tutorial series for bait beginners rigging, but, um, I was graduating from college. <laughs> As you can see, a lot has changed since the last time I hosted a tutorial here on YouTube. So, don't have to worry, I'm still gonna be beginner friendly, and I don't wanna waste a lot of time with chatting before, so why don't we get right on into this tutorial. So this is my latest beginner friendly rigging tutorial series. This set of tutorials are going to focus basically on rigging a VTuber's model body. As you all know, Headkun focuses on the head and all the components of the head, so now we're going to focus on the body. This series has two variations of the body rigging that we're going to be going through, a masculine and a feminine rigging. I find that I have to rig both of them a little different from each other depending on what a person would like and I also do have two separate versions of rigging or cutting up the model which we're gonna be covering today this will have a basic absolute bare minimal amount of rigging this will be covered in the masculine body type and a bit more complicated rigging separation model type which will be covered in the feminine body type the more complicated one is the one that I, is more accurate to the one that I personally like to use. And it's still very simplified, extremely simplified down to how I would normally do it. But I do want to make this so it is live 2D free trial version safe. And if we go any farther ahead, there will be issues of needing extra parameters that you might not have access to. So that's why we're doing it this way. So without further ado, let's get right into the separation guides, shall we? So obviously we're going to be starting with the sketching and the designing phase of the body. When I start sketching out or getting a model's artwork ready, I like to ensure that I have all of my proportions of the body and the model's shape in accordance with the design down pat. It's obvious that some of these proportions will be adjusted based on stylization pur purposes and what the client is looking for. However, I think it is important to remember that for the most part, your character should be around seven of their heads high. Of course, it can be a little bit higher or lower depending on what you're going for, but normally between seven and seven and a half heads is normal and the wrists of your arms should land around where the crotch is. Yeah, guys, you can laugh it off, it's fine. <laughs> Normally the legs are around the same length as the torso as well. However, in anime style, the legs are normally slightly longer than a normal proportion would be. Obviously, there's lots of variations of this based on the style preferences and choices. Cartoons like to mess with this a lot more than even anime. But it is important to keep in mind what normal proportions would look like. After I have my proportions and the sizing of all of my muscle structures, like the thickness of my arms and legs and hips and everything down, I like to then go through and adjust the proportions of the shoulders, the hips, in accordance to what is expected by the client or that I would like on the model itself. Obviously, hips and shoulder width will depend on if you're going for more masculine, feminine, a more robust, a plumper body type, a skinnier body type, a muscular body type, all of this will adjust how broad the shoulders are and how wide the hips are and the waist size and the thickness of the arms and stuff. So that is something you're gonna have to keep in mind because if you are gonna be having a little bit more um, muscle structure, it will affect how the rigging and gluing will have to be done. And now that I have my initial rough sketch all sorted out and all the rest of it done, I will go into a refined sketch. This is where I like to make the render a little bit more simple and clearly define where elements like the shoulders, the armpits will be, how the boobs will look, how the hips will line up with the hip bones, and defining where the knees and stuff will go. Also the hands, because I really need to practice those. But this refined sketch will make it a lot easier for yourself when you go into the actual line arting and rendering phase of this piece. 
After that, there are two methods I go through about rendering. Um, this first version we're gonna go through is the feminine version, which is my portion off key sections method. I will go through and portion off sections that need to be separated for rigging. For example, I have the shoulders separate, the arms and shoulders separated from the torso, and I have the upper neck section separated from the torso. Um, once I have that all sorted out, I'll figure out which direction the light is coming from, and I will base my shading and my flat color detail off of that. After all the parts are rendered, I will begin to separate the different parts needed for rigging. We will cover all the parts recommended for separation in a bit. Until then, just enjoy the rest of the speed pain of me working through making this model. bare minimal separation of the male masculine model and it's remember to keep in mind that this is the bare bare bones minimum that you would need to separate from model and a lot of key component components of the body might not look the greatest in rigging but this is because of restrictions that you might have or you just want to study and learn but this is the bare minimum you'll need to get the separation done and it does include a lot of the shading and base color being connected into one so understand that there may be some weird shadow effects the main separation components to remember are torso pec slash boba the collarbone neck bicep or upper arm forearm or lower arm hands, the thigh, calf, and foot. These are the main areas that I would say need to be 100% separated. And my reasoning for is this is where all of your joints connect. We want to make sure that our joints are separated and able to be rigged so that we can get those accurate movements. However, by keeping it this bare minimum and the hand being one solid image, you're not going to be able to rig the fingers to have a nice movement. However, this is being done because of the limitations of Live 2D's free trial. You may not have enough parameters to allocate the space or give that space to a movement you're never going to see on screen except for maybe once in a blue moon. Now, on to the complex separation method. Now, this is, like I said, very close to how I like to separate my, rig my artwork for rigging, but it's still more simplified. I normally have the outlines for everything separated from the flat colors from everything separated from the shading of everything so that I'm able to make the movement flawless. But yet again, load issues with the free version but this is still this way this is set up I would recommend is probably the best simplified complex rigging separation guide that I would use so the torso as I said in the previous one it was just the main torso itself and maybe the pec muscles or boobas well for the torso on this one we have a little bit more separation we'll have the torso outline then the torso base with flat color, and then I have the separated layer that will be clipped or masked to the torso color of the shading. This will make sure that when you do body turns left and right, you can move your belly button and the shading in accordance to how it would be in real life. There's even more details on the torso that I like to separate. As I have said, to get those great complex angles, I also like to separate the armpits. Well, I will have the armpits at base flat color, and then I will have the masked layer of the shading to that on top. Sometimes I'll have a outline for 
for the armpits as well, but it's not necessary. And then we have the boba or chest area. So like men's bobas are a little bit more easy, they're pecs. You don't really need a lot of the shading or um, shadows casted by them. So this allows me to show you a little bit more about the female boba. So for the chest, primarily the women's ones, um, you're going to need to make sure that you have a shadow underneath of them. As I said, that is how the light would reflect down underneath of them. So we're going to want to make we ha make sure we have a shadow section. We're going to want to make sure that we have the actual bobas themselves separated into the left and the right sections. And I'll also have a shaded center chest section. This gives me just like better depth of field and it really does help establish the areas that you want the shading to go. And it's nice, it just looks very nice. And finally, but not least, we would have had the clothing, which I have represented by the bra here, separated from the torso in general. But we're gonna keep this super simple because we are not going to put an entire outfit on this model. We're going to cover the basics of body rigging. We'll cover outfits in another, another tutorial. Onto the arms. As you can see, the arms are separated in a similar way to the first time. Bicep, forearms, and hand. However, the hand is separated into six components. The palm with the thumb, with each of the four other fingers having their own separated part. We can add subtle physics to these and movements. However, if you are using the free trial movement, as I said earlier, you may not have the parameters to do too much with these parts. So it is why I showed the more simplified hand option previously. Finally, we have the legs. This version is different from the previous version as we will be using the warp deform path method for these legs. To give you all a alternate option for using glue, as I do understand glue can get quite complicated and it takes a while to understand, so I want to give you guys that option of a section where you won't need to use as much glue. Plus, honestly, this version can turn out really nice. And last but not least, we do have one more important component to talk about, and that would be how to export your files for Live 2D. I mentioned this in Headcoon, and I believe it is still something very important to mention, but when you are making your art, your model's art, please ensure that the program that you are using can export your model as a Photoshop document, aka a PSD. Live 2D requires that you have a PSD to import the model. Clip Studio Paint, Sci Paint Tool, Krita, Photoshop, and Procreate all have this capability, so you should have plenty of options to choose from. But remember, keep that in mind, as you don't want to do all of this work, rigging up, getting all this stuff ready to rig, and realize you can't use it. Now you are all ready to start rigging the body. If you want an in-depth on how to rig or separate the head, um, as it wasn't covered in this, please check out my other tutorial series, Head Coon, which covers all the fundamentals of rigging a beginner-friendly head and has a document where you can look into how I separate my heads for rigging. And the next time we will be covering the simple body rigging, so keep an eye out for that and I hope you'll consider to join our silly little murder of crows. I'll see you all next time. Bye!